Excuse me, Your Honor. Uh, just three quick points, Your Honor. First, uh, I wanted to address U.S. Trust, which Mr. Auslander um, brought up. And to the extent that he is um, suggesting that U.S. Trust has somehow diluted the unequivocal intent uh, standard, that reliance is misplaced. Uh, U.S. Trust, page 17 of the decision, the state admitted there that there was a contract. The language that he's relying on is an amalgam of two footnotes. I think it's footnotes four and footnote seven. I could be wrong. Um, uh, so is clearly dicta. Moreover, um, let me just pause you on that so I understand the argument. You're saying that, the, that U.S. Trust, there was no question as to whether there was legislative intent. It was a New Jersey case, as, exactly. as, as, mm -hmm. as it was. It was a Port Authority uh, case, right? Yes. Port Authority. Mm -hmm. And subsequent to U.S. Trust, you have National Railroad, General Motors, um, both cases, both U.S. Supreme Court cases, um, which say clearly that the unequivocal intent standard is what governs public contracts because of the possibility of the derogation of sovereignty. And the plaintiffs cannot point to a single case in which um, courts have, one, not applied the unequivocal intent standard, and two, have somehow diluted it by pulling in a canon of construction that pensions are to be liberally construed. Um, second, I would like to address Mr. Mintz's argument concerning the Internal Revenue Code. He suggests um, he's talking about Section uh, 9.2 of Chapter 113, Section 2, and he said that COLAs are um, included there in the IRC. Uh, they are not, Your Honors. Two points. One, IRC Section 415K does describe how qualified COLAs are treated under the plan. However, a COLA is qu a qualified COLA only if employees may elect to contribute towards it. So it's inapplicable here. Also, Section 415D does mention the word COLA, but that provides that the secretary shall annually increase the $160,000 limit by a COLA. It does not address whether or not COLAs are part of the plan. Finally, I wanted to address um, Mr. Mintz's point <coughs> about the reasonable and necessary prong. <coughs> your Honor, um, as I started to mention before in um, response to your question, um, the proposed constitutional amendment provides an indefeasible, non-forfeitable right to benefits as provided under the laws governing the retirement system. So if that amendment is ratified and if this court finds um, that the non-forfeitable right extends to COLAs, I'm sure that plaintiffs will be the first ones to come in and argue that, um, the state does not concede this, but to argue that um, a remand is unnecessary or rendered moot, and that it has, control has been taken over the situation, not only from the legislature, but also from the courts. Unless there's any questions. Council have argued that there are a number of benefits that are encompassed by the statute, even though not expressly limited, death benefits, accidental benefits, and the like. Can you respond to that? Um, Your Honor, the state's position, our position is that um, the benefits that are provided under the PERS Act, which, as you said, is the service retirement, disability retirement, um, life insurance, life benefits, death benefits, rather, sorry, um, are part of the non profitable right. That gives meaningful content to it. There are a bunch of benefits outside of the individual acts that established the retirement systems. Um, for example, there's one that says um, the lowest pension should be $6,000. There's a whole stack of them that say if you're a veteran of a war, you get all sorts of um, uh, different service credits and things like that. So there are many benefits. There's two volumes of Title 43. <clears throat> that address pensions that are outside of the PERS Act. The state saying that the laws governing PERS refers to the, retire the retirement allowance and the other benefits provided under the Act. Pension adjustments, COLAs, are not in those laws. They're in a separate 
statutory scheme. You're saying the accidental death benefit, death benefit, the disability benefits, and so forth are in because they are part of those seven statutes? Yes, they're part of the acts that establish. And those are non-forfeitable? Yes. Sir. So, so what benefits other than COLARS uh, do you believe are uh, not protected by the non-forfeitable right statute? It would be all those um, rules and regulations governing pensions that are in the rest of Title 43. I just um, articulated two of them, the $6,000 limit, the, um, the special um, tweaks to the formula uh, that uh, veterans get. There's sec the section of Title 43. It's three volumes, but the two volumes that deal with pensions, it's a voluminous amount of laws uh, governing uh, laws that affect pensions. Thank you, Ms. Riley. 